Hello friends. Now today we are going to see the degree of freedom concept. So this degree of freedom concept is applicable for different mechanisms that we are dealing with, uh, particularly our, with our subject that is mechanical engineering. So what is this degree of freedom? Okay, is how this degree of freedom it is correlated to our a unit. So this degree of freedom it is defined as the number of independent coordinates which is required to define the position or orientation of a point. Right. This is the basic definition of degree of freedom. Means here we are getting the two types of coordinates. One is the space coordinates, another one is the Cartesian coordinates. So depending upon this coordinate system, so there are two types of mechanism. One is planar mechanism and another one is spatial mechanism. So what is planar mechanism? So planar mechanism is the mechanism which can be represented on a plane. Means it can be represented on a Cartesian coordinate. And these mechanisms, they are basically having three degree of freedom in which two translatory motion and one rotary motion. For this planar mechanism, there will be only three degree of freedom in which two of it is translatory motion and one is rotary motion. So for finding the degree of freedom for the planar mechanism, uh, the scientist Grubler's has defined this criteria, which is known as Grubler's criteria, in which this is the basic formula that degree of freedom f is equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2 times of L minus H, where N stands for the number of links in the mechanism and L stands for the number of lower pairs. Here, the number of lower pairs means the joints or the pairs they are having surface or area contact. And number of links we are easily identified from the diagram or from the mechanism. And H is nothing but the higher pairs. Means higher pairs means they are having point or line only. So basically, this concept now we are going to see in detail. So here is the animation for the Google Spider. So far, we have seen that a mechanism consists of links connected with pairs. Now we will see the overall effect of these links and pairs on the mechanism. And for that, we will start with a single link in a planar or two-dimensional mechanism. So here is a link in the XY plane. You can imagine this to be something like a book placed on a table. And there are only three things this body can do. It can translate along X, translate along Y, or rotate about the Z axis. Or all these things or three things may occur together. X translation, Y translation, and Z rotation. So such a body is said to have three degrees of freedom because these three motions are independent of each other. So we conclude that every additional link brings three extra degrees of freedom along with it. Now let us see the effect of adding a kinematic pair. Here we have the same rigid body, but we have constrained its motion by adding a kinematic pair. So here we have added a revolute pair. Here we have added a sliding pair, another sliding pair, and so on. Let us see what the body does. So now it is capable of only rotation or only translation along X or only translation along Y. So out of the three degrees of freedom it had, the pair has absorbed two degrees of freedom. So we conclude that every kinematic pair that we add removes two degrees of freedom. We can combine these two conclusions into a single formula for degrees of freedom of a mechanism. Since each link adds three degrees of freedom, we have multiplied the total number of links with plus three. And since each pair removes two degrees of freedom, we have multiplied the total number of pairs with minus two. Since one of the links serves as the foundation fixed to the ground, we subtract one from the total number of links. Finally, 
we generalize our formula to include pairs which have two degrees of freedom. So if P2 is the total number of such pairs, which remove only one degree of freedom, our final formula looks like this. Degree of freedom of a mechanism is equal to three times the number of links minus one, minus two times the number of pairs with one degree of freedom, minus the total number of pairs with two degrees of freedom. This is called as Grubler's criteria. Okay, so this was regarding the Grubler's criteria. Now we are going to deal with the special mechanism. So this type of mechanism it basically exists in space where it is having six degrees of freedom, in which three are translatory motion and other three will be the rotary motion. So for the planar mechanism, we will be we were using the Grubler's criteria. And for special mechanism, we will be using the Kuzbash criteria. So here, if you see, as you know, there will be six degrees of freedom. So six into n minus one, where in which for the given mechanism, one link is fixed, and the rest of the thing it is same as that of your Grubler's criteria. But usually we are not using this Kuzbash criteria because we are dealing with the mechanism which are in the plane. So we are mostly using Grubler's criteria for finding the degree of freedom of the mechanism. Now what is the mobility? Mobility is nothing but it is the number of independent input parameters that are to be controlled so that mechanism can take a place at particular position. Means here we are controlling the input so that we will be getting the desired output. So this phenomenon is nothing but what? It is the mobility. Then Grashoff's law. So Grashoff's law is nothing but this, this law. It is applicable for the four bar chain mechanism. And this law was developed by the scientist Grashoff. So this law is known as Grashoff's law. Its statement, its statement is, for planar four bar chain mechanism, the sum of length of shortest and the longest link should not be greater than the length of other two links in order to have relative motion. Because this four bar chain, it is dealing with the planar. So we have added the, in the statement, the scientists have added the word planar four bar chain mechanism. So here, if the sum of length of shortest and longest link is not greater than the length of other two links, then there will be a relative motion. Now we will see its animation. For most part in this course, we'll be studying mechanisms with four links connected in a loop. Now, this might seem awfully simple to keep anyone busy for a complete semester. But believe me, the variation of motion that it offers with just simple changes in pairs or link lengths is simply mind boggling. So here is the simplest of its kind. Four links, one, two, three, four, connected with revolute pairs here, 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 and here. Okay forming what is called as a four bar mechanism. And we are going to learn a test that tells if this mechanism will have a link capable of complete rotation. Now, why are we so concerned about having a link that completely rotates? Because such a link can then be connected to an electric motor or in olden days, say a steam engine or a internal combustion engine, and uh, the whole mechanism can then be driven automatically. The condition we are going to study is called Grashoff's criteria. It says if the sum of the shortest and the longest link lengths is less than the sum of the remaining two link lengths, then we should have a crank in our four bar mechanism. Here is one such mechanism. Let us test it. So the shortest link and the longest link add up to 30 plus 80 equal to 110. And the other two links, 50 plus 70, add up to 120. So Grashoff's criteria says we should have a crank here. So let's test by actually dragging on one of the links here, the shortest link. And indeed, it is capable of complete rotation. 
it is not even necessary that uh, the shortest and the longest link should be one next to the other as over here. We can as well have them on opposite sides. So for the link lengths satisfy Grashof's criteria, we will have a crank. Now here we are not getting a crank. Why could that be? Let's see, 35 and 90 add up to 125, while 50 plus 70 is only 120. So Grashof's criteria is violated. So the mechanism gets locked in this position or that position, and it can't move. So let us change the link length. So I will change this to 30 and this to 80 and retest it. And there we go. Now we have a crank again. Here is an interesting question for you. Uh, do you think for Grashof's criteria to hold good, uh, the smallest link should be free to move like this? Or could the longer link become a crank? You can pause the video now and think about it. Because next, we are going to fix the smallest link and uh, do this experiment and find out. Okay. So let us zoom to this um, mechanism here. I'm going to turn on uh, the construction so we can see its bare bones underneath. Then I'm going to release this link so its direction is no more fixed. And we will fix the direction of our smallest link. So it is fixed at this point and this direction is fixed. Let's hide the uh, construction and try to drag on the longest link. And there we go. It still rotates completely. So Grashof's criteria is independent of which link is fixed. Thank you.